<laughs> I just logged on to SI.com. Patrick Mahomes offered heartfelt advice to struggling Justin Fields before Bears Chiefs matchup. Oof, Chicago. Oof, Darius Butler, our longest tenured, I believe, and most frequented uh, person, whoever's come on the show, will be here to sort of break this down, give us his take. What a weird day for Chicago. They stole the headlines. We also have Rob Stats Guerrera, who can't be happy that uh, the highlight of Quarterbackville is in the Windy City, not in the Bay Area. He will correct that ahead of a Thursday night showdown between the Giants and the Niners. It's all happening on No Sleep. Cold Open wasn't there, but I did it anyway because I'm that good. Let's do it. day in Chicago. I haven't slept. Weird day here in California, but we're doing this thing. We got Darius Butler. We got Rob Stats Guerrera. Uh, two great minds, of course. Darius played in the league forever. We're going to talk to him. Can the Patriots get a win against the Jets? We're going to talk to him about that. We're going to talk to him, of course, about Indy uh, and all things defense as well. Uh, Bears can their defensive coordinator. We're going to get into that. We have stats. We've got a big game tonight, and we got a parlay. Do we have? Can I show the parlay right now? Do we have the full screen of it? It's a four-legger. We've got a no sweat bet, same game parlay. Here it is. Look at these odds. Well, plus 433, say what? And you get bonus bets back if it doesn't hit, guys. You can use it. You got this going on. You can build your own parlay too, but Brock Purdy, 200 plus passing yards. George Kittle, anytime touchdown score. Christian McCaffrey, 40 plus rush yards. This. Sounds like we're going to have champagne and get drunk with Gronk next Wednesday ahead of week four. But gosh, we're kicking off week three today. Um, and sadly, I've got nothing good to report about my hometown. Do you know what Chicago Bears gear I have? I'm at my home studio staring at me. I almost put on like a bear something just to give a little, just a little like extra love, a little extra oomph and a little extra like needling to Bears fans who clown on me all the time. But it's it's sort of sad what's going on. And i be honest with you, I do not see an end to the drama in sight right now. It started in the afternoon when Justin Fields spoke to the media. If you somehow live under a rock, uh, here's what he was talking about. He got sort of candid about his struggles. He used the word robotic, overthinking things, and he did stir up some major controversy because he was asked why that was happening. It would be, uh, you know, uh, coaching, um, I think. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it makes it, you know, uh, they're doing their job when they're giving me, you know, what to look at and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I you know, can't be thinking about that when the game comes. I prepare myself throughout the week, and then when the game comes, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's time to play free at that point. So, um, you know, just thinking less and, you know, playing more. Is it over? Oh, I watched this like 19 different times. And then everybody piles on and everyone's skewering him. And he should not have said or started the answer for sure with the word coaching. That's sort of a ooh, triggering word there in these circles. It's put it on me. We heard Debo on the show. Debo said, I love Brock Purdy because he put it on him. He said it. It's sort of the code. It's what works, what motivates, galvanizes, what leadership is all about. Uh, and it wasn't the right move. And then it opens him up for what happened, you know, especially when the coaches have been getting called out nationally for the last two weeks straight. But his full answer makes it sort of, if you really listen to it enough times, he's not blaming them. Okay, it's more about how he's sort of processing and applying the information. He's getting a lot of information, it sounds like, and how it's leading to some of those robotic issues. But after the Fields blames coaches for struggles, headlines and tweets started to explode and go viral and like the sky started melting in Chicago, Justin called the media back, as we all know, and clarified the comments. You, you guys' jobs are to get clicked, so it's like, when you take my quote out of context, when, when you just say that, if you paint the picture on the inside out, like, y'all are trying to split, split us up as a team. I'm not blaming anything on the coaches. I'm never going to blame anything on the coaches, never going to blame anything on my teammates. I will take every, whatever happens in the game, I will take all the blame. I don't care. It's a drop pass. It should have been a pass. Put it on me. Andrew Thomas on the YouTube chat says, you always have Michael Jordan in the Bulls championships from the 1990s. Luke Longley, sure. <laughs> Sure. Love that. I love that for me. To Tony Kukoc, the Croatian sensation. Absolutely. I've got those guys. I want the Bears to be freaking good. And just hearing what he said there, 
A little fire, a little fire. I like to hear that. I'm gonna get to that with Hamilton in a minute. I feel for him. He goes on to explain he's trying to give the media insight and not just stock answers. Was, anytime a quarterback, listen, Daniel Jones comes on my show and I call him out, stop giving me stock quarterback answers. Give me something real. He was trying to do that. He was trying to be earnest. He put himself in a rough spot with the answer and starting it the way that he did. But it's kind of clear, if you're smart in between here, his intention was not to pin this on the coaching staff. And it was, I mean, he's gotta be more disciplined in his answers, of course. And I know the media people in Chicago, they're very good at their jobs. This could not have been fun for them yesterday. It was sort of interesting that even his opponent, Patrick Mahomes, as I was just saying, had these words of encouragement that pretty much echoed Fields' assessment of things. Here's Pat, guys. Yeah, just trust trust your talent, trust your instincts. Uh, he's here for a reason. Um, he's made a lot of big plays happen in the NFL and in and, and college, wherever he's been. So just trust in your instincts. Um, and then go out there and be the player that you've always been, just not against us, hopefully. Not against us, hopefully. Hamilton, get in here. Everyone knows the story. We just laid it out. It's all fine. It. It's, it's a great job. But, oh, hey, go ahead. Oh, hi. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> I was recapping it. Well, here's the full disclosure. Yeah. Hamilton wanted to recap and lay it out. I feel like everybody's seen it, and I want analysis, and then I'm getting laughed off these yeah. phone calls with both Goldfarb and you about me thinking that the Bears might even win this game this week. Just hearing his voice, just hearing them like a little... The Chiefs are known to sort of take games that they should steamroll people... Uh, not lightly. They sort of like think like it's fine, and then they almost lose to the Texans last year. If this is a winnable, this would be the week for Chicago to come out there and to throw the whole world at them and figure it out. And you know they got Eberflus. I know they've got this Allen Williams situation, which, by the way, we don't have nearly enough facts. And there's allegations and there's stories and there's former players coming out and saying nobody knows the story talking about journalism and media and clickbait and all of that as Justin Fields was just doing so that I'm not going to comment on and the speculation but when you look at this game this week between the Bears and the Chiefs what are you looking for well I'm looking at you you talked about it yesterday actually the Chiefs defense and how dominant they've been to start this year and that's what I'm looking at especially with the way they've been able to generate pressure uh, on opposing quarterbacks. We saw Trevor Lawrence just constantly under duress last week. That's kind of what this Bears offense has struggled with, both keeping Justin Fields clean, but also him hanging in that pocket when things start to get rough. So, um, well, I know what you're saying. We've seen, you know, the Chiefs, you know, kind of have <laughs> some picking, letdowns. I'm I the just... <laughs> I just don't think we've seen, you know, the Chiefs are still working on things too. You know, the offense hasn't looked the way that they've wanted it to look so far. Um, you know, they just got Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones back. They're still building. So I don't think they're going to come into this game taking anything lightly. Are we talking about Travis Kelsey, the Hall of Fame football player, the one that people are calling the GOAT? Or are we talking about the one that's on Kristen Cavallari's podcast earlier this week? <laughs> What, what, does he have time to play in the game? Is he, is he going to be in Christian Cavalieri's ex-husband's old team's field situation? Or like what, what exactly is going, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah, does he have time? Is that, on, you know. The timing of that guest appearance on her part is, is interesting for sure. <laughs> uh, either way, speaking of mild dysfunction, no, we love Travis Kelsey. I'm just trying to poke holes and say, I just want to, Chicago just, listen, anything can happen. And, and this, by the way, the drama's not ending. We're going to find out about this defensive coordinator situation. It's going to unravel, unfold, and get worse. The only way you shut anybody up, it's not by your, it's a, just go out there and win. Go out there and execute. Get so mad. The media, you're tearing us apart. Click, use that. Use all those people. Use all, and, and by the way, Stacey Dales isn't in there trying to uh, you know, tear anybody apart. Like Chicago has um, uh, some, some really brilliant reporters doing their things and trying to do their job and bring uh, the story out. But let's not just like jump to conclusions on everything, except for the fact that the Bears are going to upset the Chiefs on Sunday in the late window. Uh, Hamilton, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Excellent job. I haven't slept. It's fine. Excellent job outlining all of this for everybody. And we appreciate the comments on YouTube. Thanks for the, the recap here on Sports Center by Hamilton. Uh, the Mahomes thing obviously was great. And, you know, if you were sleeping, you missed the four year New Deal. 210.6 milli guaranteed. Besides all the guaranteed money, it also means he'll be up for free agency in 2026. 
I'll be how old then? <laughs> Instead of 2031, oh, uh, which is what it was under the old deal. So this sort of uh, slots in between Burrow and Justin Herbert on a per year basis. It gets him 52.6 mil a year with a four. With his resume, I'll, I'll be honest, he absolutely could have squeezed more and jumped Burrow. But here's Patrick on his sort of thought process and why he didn't do that. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you have a lot of great players that I want to, want to be here so we can win a lot of Super Bowls, and uh, I want to make a lot of money, uh, but I also want to win. Uh, I think when you look back at, at teams and, and players, you look back at how they won and the perception of how they did things, um, and so that's what I try to manage and find the right median of getting the money but also winning football games. The perception of, uh, what did I say, the perception of players and how they win and how they did things. I mean, there's only one player that comes to mind when you're talking about taking a little bit less to give your team flexibility, and we all know that that's the GOAT, Tom Brady. Mahomes clearly getting some inspo. It's on his Pinterest board. He's got the GOAT on there. He's got, you know, the whatever. Um, and if you don't believe him, here are the facts. One, as I said earlier, is going to be making less per year than Burrow going forward. You know he could have gotten more if he wanted to. And two, the move actually saves the Chiefs an average of $8 million dollars against the cap per season going forward so his cap hit was going to average about 60 million a year over that span before the restructure it might not be quite the brady discount obviously he's getting more salary cap inflates and such the econ of it the voodoo economics there is bueller of it all but he did this deal with the bigger picture in mind multiple rings multiple many Many for him and Travis Kelsey. Uh, so that's all, all it's kind of left for him to do is to get this 22nd ranked offense rolling now, hopefully against a defensive coordinator less Chicago Bears with all sorts of tumult and turmoil going on. All right, guys, we do a football tonight. I mean, this, the NFL is never short of drama. I wouldn't even really know what's going on in Chicago, but let's sort of turn our page to the Giants going to the Bay Area to take on the Niners. Big blue coming off. It has to be sort of a an exasperating, emotional high win over the Cardinals. But it was um, brought down a little bit by Saquon's injuries we talked to Daniel Jones about. So he was officially ruled out, unfortunately, yesterday afternoon. So I don't know, beating the Niners, that is a tall order, even if Saquon was healthy. So now a lot of weight really going to fall on Daniel Jones against last year's number one ranked total defense, which is looking all all of the number one ranked defense this year as well. They're looking really tough. So if there's one area you can get after the Niners, it is the secondary. We know that. We're always like, what am I going to do for the secondary? And we will talk to Stats Guerrera, and I will look at your comments, guys, throughout the show, streaming on our YouTube page live. Uh, if the O-line can hold up, he's going to have chances to make plays against this group that was 20th against the past a year ago and ranks just 23rd this year. So do Dable and Kafka adjust after last week? Do they let Daniel try to air it out early? Is Jalen Hyatt calling for the bomb or whatever to start the second half? I don't know. I think it's worth a shot. Do it. Run it back. Do whatever. Have that crazy peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Put the extra juice in the IV that you had, the extra electrolytes, whatever. I don't think you have a shot at winning it otherwise unless you completely empty the tank. And I feel like if you're Daniel, no one's giving your team a better shot in this game uh, or, or a shot in this game at all. If you're looking at the odds, if you're looking at everybody talking, I had dudes, I had an overnight shoot and everybody said in their lineup, nobody's playing Daniel Jones in fantasy. I was trying to Jones him up for it. It's hard to do in this matchup on a short week. Uh, but I'm just going to say, add a baby, add a boy, let it rip. It worked last week. Show people what you can do. So we'll touch on the Niner side of these things with Rob Stats Guerrera, and he'll have, I'm sure, plenty to say and conjecture upon a little bit later. Um, okay, I want to show you guys the parlay on the way to break here. What do you make of it? And this is something called an alternate odds. I'm just learning this. We're all learning together. I had a really awesome discussion about this on Twitter yesterday, even though some of you were being so, so mean. Here's what we've got cooked up. It is a no sweat, uh, same game parlay. Four legs, insane odds. So we'll um, check that out. But take eight look. What is your first leg of tomorrow's parlay? Yes, I'm going to go with the Niners covering, uh, minus three and a half. Okay, I'm going to go with Brock Purdy, 200 plus passing yards. He's thrown for 200 or more in seven of his last eight starts. Yes, that's definitely a good choice. And then my second choice is going to be a George Kittle anytime touchdown. I mean, he had 12 touchdowns last year. He hasn't had a touchdown in the first game or the second game of the season this year. So he's due to have a touchdown this Thursday night, Jay. He torches Thursday night football. Some dudes just like those short weeks, and Kittle is one of them. The last leg, I'm going to go with the aforementioned uh, Wonder Boy, CMC, Christian McCaffrey, 40 plus rushing yards. That, that sounds like easy, easy. He's the NFL's leading rusher right now, plus 400. Woo, woo, woo. And that means it qualifies, guys, for the no-sweat parlay. 
All right, there it is, guys. No sweat, same game parlay. Get in on the action. Go to the Up and Adam Show Twitter. Bailey is doing his thing, making that pop off this morning. So uh, this all seems like a lot of fun against the Giants. It is a great Thursday night matchup you can check out on Amazon Prime and have some fun. It's a little fun over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Okay, next we've got friend of the show. I believe, I mean, he's he's really good at these parlays. This is Mr. Parlay, Mr. Hey. Darius Butler himself. Good hey, aren't you glad you're not from Chicago? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm from South Florida. Well, what I want to be from. Come on, man. Of course I'm glad I'm not from Chicago. <laughs> That's a nice mm-hmm. parlay. I like it. <laughs> you do? I, I, I think like the it. odds I, I like are good, right? Lot. Good odds. You know, you got the alt. I'm, it's got to be an alt line there with the, with the three and a half. You know, it's an alt line. It's a tough line and hey. getting a little hook there, but I like it. <laughs> Kiddo getting in the end zone. I learned. Like, like Gronk said. Listen. You know, so I like it. I like listen. it. Listen. Uh, well, Kittle, like, I think he scored in six of seven or five of seven Thursday night football games, so I think it'll happen tonight for mm. sure. If, you're, if anybody's building their own parlay, he's a really good anytime touchdown scorer, and he hasn't had a big game yet. Um, he just got this incredible hair. I just learned what an alt, alt line was. Aren't you proud of me? Really? I, I thought I thought I saw you checking somebody on um, on Twitter. No! About it, but uh, I, li- I like I the alt lines. I, met- you know, I like it. Yeah, I like it. You got to check him sometime, okay? Sometimes they get out of no, pocket. No, right? I Just... wasn't. Listen to this. This this man writes this like, what? Th- that's a crazy. Odd. And I said. It's called an. I was being earnest because I just learned about it when we were putting together the parlay. I was like, it's an alt line. Look it up. Like I don't know. It's an alt like. And then everyone's killing him. And so I follow him. I'm not kidding. I follow him on Twitter. And I gave like the most. <laughs> Heartfelt. I gave the most heartfelt <laughs> apology. This is me. Hi, Joseph. I just got to know about alt bets this week. My quote tweet was not meant in a negative way. I am right there with you, and I think it was a great question. I'm sorry people are blank. Um, mm. Just wanted to apologize and make sure you knew I amplified it to answer a question I think lots of people have. New to this, I'm with you. And then he was writing back. Educational. Because I, educational. I felt so bad. I like yeah. it. I like that. We need we need more people like you on X, K. We need more people like you because I, I tell you what, I wouldn't go that far to apologize. Don't, don't but I know. You educated right, we're them. Talk that's, to you. That's, that's what's important. Anything you want to talk about on the old television? Um, I mean, we could talk. I mean, you know me. I'm ready for Chicago. anything. Talk about anything. Just let me uh, give me a heads up if you're gonna ask me about any old empires <laughs> or history or anything hey, I learned in high school. Can I school, tell you just, something? Algebra, anything. Okay, we're gonna you... save it. We're gonna save it for TV. Can we Uh-oh. get this laid up? Uh oh. Let's save it for. Let's save it for TV. I have to look that. I gotta look that up. Let's get right to it. we got a big game tonight between the Niners and the Giants, and I'm welcoming in a nine-year NFL veteran defensive back. You can see him on ESPN's um, NFL matchup. You can see him on the man-to-man pod. You can see him on Pat McAfee. You can see him on the sidelines of college games while they're happening on ESPN. <laughs> he is taking over. But did y'all know that my friend Darius Butler is a certified TikTok star? Do you know this? Me? Yeah. Well, no, I don't. I know. Yeah. I don't know. This. I'm. My daughter would have told me this by now, so I. I doubt it. I doubt that. I. I, I doubt am, that. I am not care. a TikTok. I am not a TikToker. I have twenty nine point six thousand followers. All my stuff is like twelve views. Forty thousand views is my most. I put up the Roman uh-huh. Empire thing. One point seven million. You went viral on TikTok, Darius. You did. Jeez. <laughs> 
We did numbers, but hey, this might be the second time we did numbers now, okay? The last time when we celebrated hey. your parlay or you know your birthday with the champagne <laughs> bottle. <laughs> I don't know if it hit those numbers, but uh that was a, you know, that was a that was a good internet moment for sure. I saw you celebrating again with Gronk, uh celebrating a parlay win, which hey, hey, that was tough to come Thank by. You. So, Thank you. Work, Not work. if you're you why, what's your what's the secret to putting together a winning parlay? Because if listen, if Darius Butler puts a parlay out, y'all gotta play. Notes, 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 <laughs> research. Watch a film. I'm not Orlowski, okay? I don't watch every snap like he says. Uh, but I mean, you know, you get lucky sometimes. You gotta get lucky. You gotta play the game. But you know, you look at the game. You look at the teams, the matchups, and some things just jump out. And uh, you know, you gotta take a risk with at least one leg, like that George Kittle touchdown. On your parlay, I would think that's yeah. the riskiest pick, somebody getting into the end zone, especially with all those weapons. But it's some luck, some research. And, uh, you know, so hopefully hopefully, I get a few more this season. Well, you said you liked our same game parlay. And it's a no-sweat bet, so everybody go on FanDuel and check it out ahead of tonight's action. As much as I want to talk to you about the Roman Empire, um, we'll save that <laughs> for another time. Look out, look out, Alex Earl. We're taking over TikTok, Darius and I. But let's get to this bear situation. Hearts a little oh. break in here. I want them to be great. Justin Fields, he had the interactions two twice with the media yesterday. What did you make yeah. of what happened in Chicago? You know, it's just Justin Fields, still a young, you know, young man, a young quarterback in this league. And it's a lot that comes with being a franchise quarterback. Everything and anything you say uh, can and will be taken out of context. Uh, when it comes to headlines. And then some things, you know, may not be taken out of context, but I think he's just learning that more and more, um, especially when you're struggling, you're not winning. We saw it with Russell Wilson. You know, he was kind of everyone's golden boy. And then as soon as he started not playing as great, started losing games, now everything's getting paid. What is he doing on the plane? Oh, this is corny, that's corny. So it's about winning and being, being productive as that uh, franchise quarterback. And I think once Justin Fields starts to do that again, all these other things, all these other things will kind of go away. But that needs to come first. You know, a lot of people forget this was the worst team in the league last year, pretty much. They had number one pick before they traded it away. Um, so they got to figure out how to get the best out of Justin Fields. And then Justin Fields will obviously, obviously figure out the other things that come with being a franchise quarterback as far as, you know, just picking at and picking apart, you know, every little thing uh, he may say. Then you've got the decoordinator thing, which we don't have enough information on to really speak about. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot going on in the locker room. And it's sort of the focus of the league right now, even yeah. with a big Thursday night game, even with Patrick Mahomes getting this whopping contract, their opponent this week, by the way. If you're one of yeah. these teammates, if you're one of these guys in the locker room, how do you feel about the situation? Who is there somebody in there that you think is the one to like stand up and be the galvanizer? Like, let's go, let's Ooh. go shut everybody up with a win this week. See, you know, I don't I don't know. I don't know that locker room like that. You know, every every locker room yeah. is different. Sometimes you look at the quarterback, sometimes the coach. The coach is fairly new. The GM is fairly new. Um, you know, it's a lot of moving parts uh, in that locker room. So, you know, that's something they got, they got to figure out. And, and what you find out in football and in sports is kind of winning kind of cures all. And they're far, it looked like they're far away from winning right now. Uh, but somebody's got to bring them together. And uh, and obviously put a good product out there on Sundays. But then more importantly, you know, we don't know what's going on off the field with uh, Allen Williams. Just mentioned that defensive coordinator, he resigned. So we can all assume that it's pretty serious. Nobody just resigns um, in the middle of the season. Everyone's kind of been, you know, really uh, uh, tight-lipped about what, what, what they do know. So, um, you know, as that stuff comes out, we'll see what it is. But um, that's a lot of outside distractions and noise outside of that building. Yeah. And that's something you don't want to be dealing with on, shoot, a Thursday going into week three about to face the uh, defending uh, world champs in the Kansas City Chiefs. I've, I've convinced myself they can win this game because the Chiefs don't have it all figured out what? yet. And Darius, don't, I don't even have to look <laughs> at you to know how you're looking at me. How you're looking at me. I just feel, listen, your, te your team, the Colts, Jeff Saturday, uh -huh. his first game as a head coach, they they rolled. Something something about True. the second time Field said, "Hey, hey, media, get in here. I want to talk to you. Stop trying to click like pick, pick apart." Or isn't there a little something there that? And Chiefs, don't tell me that they always take lower competition very seriously and crush them and have dominant wins by 20, 30 points. They don't. Yeah, the Chiefs are kind of known as the team who, especially early in the season. 
Um, they're going to win, but a lot of times they're not going to cover. And, and when you have an athletic quarterback, that can always be the wrench in anyone's plan. Oh. Um, but that's the problem. They're not using Justin Fields' athleticism. I think that's number one. That's the number one issue right now. I think there should be at least, I think I heard uh, he only, it's only been five design runs in the first two games. I think it should be at least five a game where you're getting the ball in Justin Fields' hands and letting him run and be an athlete and then figuring things out in the past game, which if you look at the film, which I have, it's not as far away as it seems or as people are making it out to be. Um, there are different things. Uh, you want to see more confidence and more conviction in the decision-making, you know, at the top of his drops, you know, where guys are going to be. Because in the league, you got to anticipate throws to make accurate ones in the coverage and not seeing that enough. But it, there are sparks and, and plays here and there uh, that you see from Justin Fields in the passing game. So it's not that far away, and it's not insane to say they can go out and beat the Chiefs. I mean, you got to line it up and play every week. Um, but you also expect the Chiefs to, at some point, start to figure it out and play better, um, especially on that offensive side of the ball. I think their defense, especially with Chris Jones being back in the middle, defense is playing mm -hmm. pretty well to start the season off. It's well said. Let's move on from Chicago. There's a game tonight. It's the Up and Adams Bowl because we have Debo Samuel and Daniel Jones as regulars on Tuesday. We had them. We talked about this game. It's a short week. It's kicking off week three. It's a good game on Thursday Night Football on uh, Prime Video. So, uh the Giants are without Saquon. That's not fun. Tough task up against Nick Bosa and company in this defense. What does Dable need to do? What needs to happen for this offense in New York to sort of be able to take down? Like, what's it going to take? I mean, for them, honestly, you want this on a short week, especially a short week for the Giants where in huh. their second half, you know, you had a great comeback. You stayed out west in Arizona. You had a great comeback in the second half against the Cardinals. Offense found some things out, figured some things out, hopefully. Obviously, you lose Saquon, but you are kind of riding that momentum, and now you have a short week against a great opponent uh, in the San Francisco 49ers, who they're dealing with a couple injuries uh, with IU there, too. We'll see how healthy he is tonight. But what they're going to have to do, they're going to have to figure out how to get Jalen Hyatt involved again. Two big catches uh, last week. And then defensively, we got to get some production out of that defense. You know, no sacks, no interception for weak Martindale's defense. They got to get that figured out. You need, you're going to need some splash plays uh, to beat an opponent who, in the 49ers, you look at it from the top down, one of the best rosters in football. Um, most people's power rankings right now, they're probably one or two. Um, so it's going to be a tough task for the Giants. Uh, but Daniel Jones got to keep doing whoever was calling plays. Whatever adjustments Jones is making, <laughs> keep doing it. Uh, keep getting Waller involved. And keep getting uh, Jalen Hyatt behind that defense, man. He's a tough, uh, a tough guy to deal with with his speed. And if it was one Achilles heel of this 49ers yeah. defense from last year, it was the deep ball. So if you can find a way to get behind that defense with the deep ball, which obviously starts with protecting Daniel Jones first and foremost, um, I think that'll be their keys to victory. Big plays on offense and some splash plays on defense, man. Yeah, that, I don't know. It's Wink Martindale. We expect a little bit more from him through two weeks. So a we'll see more. if he can help Daniel Jones and company uh, out. Yeah, of course, not having Saquon. You mentioned the secondary there. And obviously, there was a lot of talk about what a beautiful ball to start the second half, Jalen Hyatt. And he, he called for the ball. He said, give me the ball. And Daniel Jones was like, he called the play, kind of. He, he wanted it. He got this done. If you're, this is a very confident, this is his like first career reset. Like, this is unbelievable first that one. he's doing this in his, yeah, in his early NFL action. If you're a DB, if you're in the secondary, which is, you know, being called susceptible, it's their weakness on this Niners defense, and you have this kid who's barking for the ball and he's got all this swag, like, does that affect you going into this game? You want to shut him up a little bit? Nah, nah, it doesn't affect you. You know, every every week, every opponent, they're going to have uh, certain people on the scout report who you got to pay attention to. And Hyatt is going to be one of those people if he continues uh, making those type of plays because everyone knows the speed that he has. Uh, but this was his first, first what, two catches he had last week with both big catches. So he hasn't really made a name for himself in the league. But DBs and secondaries are going to be aware uh, but where he is, you know, whether it's him in motion or him in the slot, speed, if he lines up at number three, remember that deep corner route he had in the preseason, which was one of those plays that we may see tonight. So you're definitely going to be aware of where he is. Um, but Darren Waller, Hodgkins, like all these guys can make plays. And it obviously starts with the quarterback. Can you keep him protected? Can you keep him comfortable? And can you keep it to where it's a balanced offense? Because you don't want Daniel Jones dropping back you know, 35, 40 times in a game. You want to, just like what they need to do in Chicago, 
continue to use Daniel Jones' legs and athleticism to kind of make the game easier and come to him. But, um, you know, on offense for the Niners, you know, they're so damn good with Brock Purdy and all those weapons, C-Mac leading the league and rushing. Um, it's going to be – they're going to have their hands full for sure um, than if you're the New York Giants. And that one's happening tonight. So, guys, go over to FanDuel Sportsbook if you want to have a little fun. There's a lot of people putting up their prop bets and, like, putting the good vibes over on our chat on YouTube, which we love to see. Uh, I want to yeah. talk about Gronk's prediction for a game sort of stuck out to me. He, it wasn't a score. It wasn't over-unders. It wasn't a prop. It was the fact that these two 0-2 teams, the Chargers and the Vikings, facing each other, whoever loses is going to be in trouble. Okay, whoever, there's going to be changes made. Basically what he said, if the Vikings lose this game and go 0-3, they're going to ship out Kirk Cousins. They're going to trade him, okay? And he said Whoa. that if the Chargers go 0-3, Brandon Staley is going to get fired going into week four action. What do you think of that? And what do you make Ooh. of this game when you see Chargers at Vikings? Who's got the edge? I mean, those are those are some bold takes from from <laughs> from Gronk. Uh, I feel like Staley's seat has kind of been hot, at least from the outside in, for a couple years now. Um, especially when you have a quarterback like Justin Herbert. But um, I think the Chargers have the edge. Um, if you look at Justin Herbert and that offense, you know, even with Kellen Moore coming over doing some different things, but a lot of similar things that Herbert's been successful with. He moves the ball. Uh, it, it, they're scoring points. They're not turning the ball over. Uh, last week, they were terrible on third down. They're only two and two for 14, I believe, on third down and like three for three on fourth down. But you got to have third down conversions, keep those chains moving, put score points on the board. And you got to close out games. You know, the first two games, they had opportunities to close them out in regulation and win them, and they didn't do that. Um, and then on defense, you got to make plays. You got a lot of big names on that Chargers defense, but they haven't been making uh, the plays to live up to those names up to this point, at least. So you had Tannehill go, what, 20 for 24, which, you know, Tannehill's a good yeah. quarterback, but he shouldn't be that um, efficient against a defense like the Chargers. So I think they have an edge in, the, in both of those locker rooms. I agree from this standpoint. It's definitely a must win. Uh, going into week thir three is early for a must win, but it definitely is. Vikings, man, hey, they got a lot of things to figure out, too. They, they covered back door on Thursday last week, but that game, they kind of got beat up that game against the Eagles. So they got some things to figure out. I don't think Kirk Cousins, I don't think he's going anywhere, though. I don't think he's a problem. I don't think he's the issue. He's putting up a lot of yards, uh, a lot of points, um, but some other things that need to be figured out in Minnesota before you start shipping Kirk Cousins to New York. I don't know who's going to want the bag. I feel like it's his last year as a Vikings quarterback. I think they're going to go younger. Mm -hmm. We'll see. If they keep losing, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But I feel like we're going into week three such a weird place because everyone just wants to pretend they know these teams already. And we don't. And there's good and bad. And, like, it's way too early to be saying that. That said... The, Ra the Ravens are going to win the Super Bowl, if you ask me. They look so that good. Was my pick. They take that care was my of business. Pick. Yeah, I know. And they take care of business, right? Against the Bengals, which, whatever. We won't even talk about that. It's only been two weeks, DB, but Lamar's completing 74.5% of his passes. Todd Monken is awesome. You know, and this is banged up. This team is already banged up, and they still look this yeah. dominant. So. What's what's the secret to how this offense is making it happen? Hey, before we even get to the to, to the Ravens, those Bengals, your Bengals, hey, yeah. another <laughs> must must win uh, this week. Starting off zero and two, question marks over there right now too. But I mean, it starts with Lamar. It, it, that's kind of what it all where it always starts in this league. It seems with the quarterback position and what Lamar has shown us. What he's proven up to this point in his career, if he's playing, the Ravens are winning. Even the first week when it was ugly for a lot of teams, it was ugly against the Texans, found a way to win. Then you come out against a divisional opponent, and then you play even better. And look, even you lose Odell, you look great in the passing game. Zay Flowers getting involved down the field, threw a couple of dots on those slot fades for touchdown as well. So he's finding his groove. And Monken, he's opening up more. And, and Lamar, he's kind of using his legs when he needs to, to extend plays and still make throws down the field. So I'm loving what I'm seeing uh, from Lamar. Uh, now, like you said, they are banged up. You know, you, you lose Marcus Williams with the peck for the year. O-line is a little banged up. You lose J.K. So at some point you think, you know, that may show his head. But, I mean, Lamar has shown this. If he's playing, the Ravens are winning. And also their culture, the head coach, Harbaugh. Mm -hmm. You don't even have Marlon Humphrey back in the lineup yet. 
Shout out to Rocky Sin. He's been playing some good ball at corner. So the Ravens are doing a lot of good things, and they'll be tried and tested throughout this year, been in the AFC North. Um, but I picked them before the year to make a Super Bowl appearance, and uh, I'm, st- I'm sticking with, with uh, LJ and the boys down there in Baltimore. Looking like a good pick. All those notes, those legal pads, the yellow papers. Looks like you're doing your thing. And it's gotta be yellow too. It's gotta you. be yellow. In 2023, we're living in a world where the Bengals are not good and the Rams are like on fire with a guy named Puka. Like that's Puka. That's the world. <laughs> He's so good. He's unbelievable. What 30 targets throughout <laughs> the first two weeks? At most in NFL history. What 23, 25 catches, something like that. Puka is a dog, and I think McVay said he just he just has it figured out. And the thing that Stafford has shown us, if there's a receiver out there that's going to be where he needs to be and going to be open, Stafford is going to find you early and often, and uh, that's what they've been doing. They've been playing well on defense too, uh, surprising a lot of a lot of people, myself included. I did not expect this from the Rams um, this year to be uh, as competitive as, as they are right now as a team. We've got a pop quiz for you. I don't know the answer to this, but my producer just told me in my ear, before we let you go, you had, I believe, four touchdowns in your NFL career. Do you remember the very first one? And more importantly, what did you do with the ball? But do you remember it? Oh, I'm not, I hope I have the ball. But yes, I remember it. Uh, Houston, late in the season, either week 17, 18, tip ball, (laughs) uh, off of Jacoby Jones' hands. And I was just running, just hauling ass cakes. I'm like, I know Jacoby's on the field. Andre Johnson's on the field. I have to run as fast as possible. Get a little high step at the end. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, tips and overthrows, 91 yards. And for a trivia question for anybody down the line, this was the longest interception return for a touchdown in the Tom Brady era in uh, Patriots. I learned that on another show from Teddy Bruschi. Where's the ball? No clue. Probably at my mom's house. Yeah, probably at my Aww. mom's house. But I, I, I need to find Well, I'm it. asking. I'm asking because I want to just end this with the Colts. The tie, their tight end, Kylan Granson, he catches his first touchdown, <laughs> just like you were just so happy about it. And with the oh, same yeah. ball that Stepping he caught, he did, he did this. He did this with the ball. Let's take a look now, here. Now, 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 I know where... <laughs> I, I would never do that. I'd say that, but Grant I, I, you know, I like it to each his own. See the little flower over the ear. Do, do you? Know, you? I guess it's nice. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, to each his own. You like that? I'm glad you enjoyed the touchdown. <laughs> Hopefully, it's first of many, being that you are a Colt, and obviously, I'm a huge Colt fan. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's 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 cool. I guess we We're we would definitely have some fun with that in the locker room for sure. <laughs> I bet you could have lots of fun listening to Darius Butler on the Man to Man podcast. Watch him. I mean, is there something I'm missing? ESPN's NFL matchup, Pat McAfee. What's going on? Are you are you traveling this weekend too? No, no, no college football this weekend. I'm off this weekend, but um, we'll have some some more games down the pipeline. Those, I mean, honestly, those are the most fun that I have. You know, because as a football player, I'm used to watching the game from field level from the sideline. At some point, I want to get in the booth and call games, but this is kind of both uh, together. It's hard to see the field, obviously, when you're on there, but just those live reactions of somebody that's really a fan of the game and these unbelievable college atmospheres, uh, that's that's the favorite part of my job right now is being on the field with that mic with the guys. So uh, it's it's pretty fun. But now you didn't miss anything. I'm moving around. Busy football season. It's golf season. It's football season. Busy, I know. And right now it's gone as football. <laughs> uh, it's push-up season always with Darius Butler. We appreciate always. you. Thank you for joining us. Great insights ahead of week three in action tonight, guys, between the Niners and the Giants. And so you got to set your lineups. We love DB on the show. And we're going to get you some sleepers right now because I love you. I love you guys. So it's time to send that text, that DM that says, uh, sup, you up? Here are my favorite sleepers for week three in both daily and season-long leagues. Let's get to it. Okay, let's go. At quarterback, Russell Wilson, the loss last week overshadowed what was uh, a really good fantasy performance even before the Hail Mary at 308 passing, 56 on the ground. I think this Dolphins defense has some holes, people. At running back, Jarek McKinnon, we haven't seen him involved in the passing game yet. We know he was huge 
there for Kansas City last year. So I think this is the week uh, against a Bears defense that's allowed the most receiving yards. Guys, the most to running backs. And Jordan Addison, he scored in both games. Nobody's really talking about it or giving it love because the Vikings need to win. And they've got the Chargers pass defense. Brandon Staley, defensive-minded coach. Hello, ranking dead last in the NFL right now. Those are my sleepers. Get them in your daily lineups over at FanDuel. All right, next on Up and Adams, the Commanders. Uh, they're going to tinker with the old Bills this weekend. Josh Allen is back. Hammer is back to tell you about how. Niners Giants, Debo versus Daniel Jones. Not many. I can't think of somebody else like Jerry Rice, maybe. I, Steve Young, Christian McKenna. No, I want to talk to this person right here. He is the host of the Gold Standard Niners podcast, our very good friend of the show, Rob Stats Guerrera. How are you, my friend? Excited for tonight? I can't wait, Kay. Week three, bring it on. Yeah, we're excited. Love what you're doing with the podcast. Best information in the biz about the Niners. Uh, are you excited that the quarterback talk is in Chicago and not in the Bay right now? It's nice. Like, I don't know what to do with my hands where you don't have a quarterback <laughs> controversy in San Francisco. <laughs> Other than last week, Brock has thrown up two touchdowns a week almost, and he's only had one start in his career in the regular season where they haven't put up 30 points. So life is good. Oh, what do you mean here? Hold on, hold on. Like, oh, excuse me. Well, you make a living out of out of finding the holes in this, and I'm trying to find them for you here. I tried. I tried my. I stayed up all night. Twelve straight regular season wins. 
They're 2-0, like you said. FanDuel Sportsbook has them as double-digit favorites tonight. It's all flowers and roses and cupcakes. I, I know you got to have something. Not not one complaint? You want to hit the secondary like a pinata? I mean, nickel corner has been sketchy. That's true. <laughs> They've had their problems there. But, I mean, it's the second longest winning streak the 49ers have ever had. So what can I complain about? <laughs> okay, I gotta go. I can't have. I I can't have this stats. What are your podcasts like, Pollyanna? It's nice. It's we we talk about football. We're talking about the Super Bowl, possibly the number one seed, and that's the thing with tonight. This is a handle your business game. You're trying to be the number one seed in the NFC. The Cowboys are undefeated. You're gonna have to play them in a couple weeks. Don't mess around with the sad sack Giants. Go and dominate them from the word jump. Give me like a 33-13 type of win where you just snuff out their offense and roll. That's what it needs to be for the 49ers tonight. Especially without Saquon Barkley, especially with his Giants defense not notching a sack. Wink Martindale there definitely doesn't have him playing up to their potential or what we expected for them uh, through two games so far this season. It's a short week. It's kicking off week three. We're so excited. Uh, I would like to know the last time you said the name Trey Lance. I want to know the last time you thought about Trey Lance. And, well, well, don't roll your eyes because you were the president. You were the choo-choo conductor of the (laughs) Trey Lance train, my friend. And he's now a cowboy, nowhere to be seen. Okay, fine. Roll your eyes. Let's not talk Trey Lance. Tell me what you are seeing in Brock Purdy's game that has you feeling so happy. The guy has all the answers to the test. Like, no matter what you do, he knows what to do. You're going to send a free rusher, he dumps it off to his hot read. You're going to blitz, he throws to wherever the blitz came from. You just never can rattle this guy. And it's amazing considering he's still, you know, not even finished a whole year in the NFL. He just looks so in control of the offense. I don't have this fear that I had when Jimmy Garoppolo was there, where he would drop back to pass, and then I didn't know what was going to happen. When Brock drops back to pass, I'm excited. Like something good is about to go down and it's, it changes your whole experience watching the game. It's so true. Now I'm coming off a big parlay win with Gronk. I want to keep it rolling. My parlay relies on Christian McCaffrey going for over 40 rush yards. I believe he's taking, taken at 92% of the reps over the past two weeks. Any worry that this is the week Shanahan's like, oh, I don't know, let's, let's just, let's all give him the ball a million times. I, I don't, are we worried? Well, he did talk about wanting to get Elijah Mitchell some more carries because McCaffrey played 100% of the snaps last week. But here's the thing with that bet that I think you're sitting pretty on. McCaffrey has had in week one, a 65-yard touchdown. And in week two, he had a 51-yard run. So he may hit that over on one play tonight. So I I think that's easy money for you to hit that over with McCaffrey. The whole offense centers around him and the gravity that he has wherever he moves on the field. So he's a key part of the game. 40 yards is not a ton rushing. The Giants stink against the run. They've been getting crushed so far this year. So I love that for you. I think you're going to be dancing again, Kay. Yeah, we love it. Now, besides Saquon, which is a bummer for the Giants, and I like both teams, honestly, the biggest question mark really is uh, this offensive line, which week one was just a disaster for Daniel Jones, as we all saw. I mean, they're all pro left tackle Andrew Thomas. He's already ruled out. And let's take a listen to what Daniel Jones had to say about that O-line in this matchup. The guys up front played really well on Sunday, and I'm confident that they'll, uh, they'll do the same Thursday night. So it's a good group in San Francisco, for sure. Like you said, they got... Uh, Bosa and, you know, the number of guys up front who can affect the game. So we'll be ready for it and, and have a plan for it. That was Daniel Jones on our show on Tuesday, <laughs> coming to us from a, a hotel somewhere on the West Coast ahead of this game tonight. Uh, you're you're laughing really <laughs> deviously, but he sounds kind of he sounded confident there in the O line. The Cowboys got him for seven in Week One. Are you taking the over or under on the nine? Your Niners beating that number tonight. Oh, seven is a lot, but here's the thing. They're going to be all over him. He may have a plan, but Mike Tyson said it best. Everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. And that is what the 49ers are going to do to the Giants. And here's the thing. Daniel Jones holds the ball longer than anybody except Justin Fields, which is not good against this 49ers defensive line. And Daniel Jones passer rating under pressure is 26. So he is going to be under pressure from all angles. I don't care what their plan is. The left side of their offensive line is out. It's going to be backups at left tackle and left guard. Daniel Jones is in trouble. 
We had Daniel, uh, your boy Debo, on the show. Enough about the Giants and Daniel Jones, who's in trouble tonight. We have him each and every Tuesday. It's it's mm -hmm. fun. It's it's kind of wild. We're gonna get in our groove with Debo. We asked him who his favorite team to beat was, which I figured was gonna be the Rams because he just takes care of business against them. But his answer to me was surprising. Take a listen. Like we kind of got this little back and forth thing with 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 Seattle. So um, mm. it'd be good to beat Seattle because it's because it's kind of like. Kind of like the Rams, you know, they know us, we know them, and we get their best, they get our best. And um, between the two teams, like, it's always good, good hard fought games, and it always comes down to the end. Which team do you like to see the Niners beat the most? Uh, it's still Seattle. They tortured me for years with Russell Wilson and Debo, too. Like, don't forget, the Niners still were losing a lot to Seattle early on in this run since 2019. So I get that. Plus, they're the biggest threat to the Niners in the NFC West. So it makes complete sense that Debo would say that they can't lose enough for me. Nothing irritates me more than when one thing goes good for the Seahawks during a game and they cut right to Pete Carroll on the sidelines, chewing that gum with that stupid look all over his face i can't take it anymore <laughs> so i love beating the seahawks you like beating the seahawks i need a big game out of george kittle it's been quiet it's been quiet these first two weeks but he dominates thursday night some guys just have it i'm putting all the juju into a big george kittle performance and a big wink martindale performance and a big darren waller performance and a big iu performance i want it all i want fireworks a brilliant thursday night matchup uh, stats you are the absolute best we love supporting you your podcast uh, i gotta come on and just you know talk to you sometime i gotta get back on there invite me you're invited. Anytime you want to do it, I'd love to have you. Thanks for having me. Niners, big tonight. All right. You can check out. Are you doing it? Are you putting a pot out tomorrow? We're going to put a pot out tonight, an instant reaction show right okay. after the game on Sorry, YouTube and here. tomorrow, every day, basically. Okay, it's the Gold Standard Niners podcast. Sorry, I couldn't hear you, but guys, check out that podcast. He is doing all of the work for what's potentially the biggest contender in the NFC. Big thanks to Rob Stats Guerrero and everybody he works with at that machine over there making dreams come true. After this, we're going to talk to Hammer. We're going to get a little Hammer time on how Sam Howell, those commanders undefeated. Guys, Jarvis Landry, Darius Slayton on the program. Very exciting. Um, okay, let me look at some of these comments, guys. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Kittle, two catches, 13 yards, and one fumble loss. Book it. Excuse me, who's Charles? Can we get rid of Charles Barkley? Charles Barkley, you're getting bounced out of the club. Get out of here. Get out of here. Um, do I remember the 21st of September? Oh my gosh, I do. I simply do. Slayton, yeah, that'll be amazing. We'll massive upset. If the Giants defeats the Niner. Oh, really? The 21st of September was your bar mitzvah? How do you remember that? Really? It's a date, it's a date you remember? I just, I, I, I don't know. Okay, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> Biggest day of your life, I love it. Uh, tight guest list for Club K, that's true. Let's see who else. Who else do we have on the show next week, potentially? I was trying to get a bear on today, guys, and it was not easy because there's lots going on. Oh, they're telling me Deshaun Jackson, which is an absolute lie. I don't believe it until I see it. But Deshaun Jackson's, yeah, right. He's going to be like getting his, um, I don't even know, uh, getting a, an oil change at Jiffy Lube because he won't be able to come on. <laughs> um, oh, we have a surprise guest for Gronk on Wednesday that's going to pop on live. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Um, yeah, but tomorrow should be really fun. Jalen Hyatt is a star. 
uh, get Eli Manning on. Barbara, I'd love to get Eli Manning on. Trust me. All right, guys, we're going to do commander's talk right now. You heard me. The defeated commanders. Let's do it. See you guys tomorrow. After this. We love Commanders. The vibes are high and they have not lost. Matt Hamilton's here to uh, bring us a little something about their offense. Here he is with the latest <laughs> Listen here. Listen here, you. Sam Howell mm -hmm. is 2-0. and oh. You know I've been on the Howell train from day one. Is it time everyone else starts believing in him and this squad? I'm on board now, Kay. I'm with you. I don't think this is a fluke. He's going to hit some bumps along the way. There's some things he still has to work on, ball security, things like that. But his ability to understand man and manipulate coverages, get the ball out to his talented playmakers on this commander's offense, and his toughness in the pocket are going to give him a good chance to be really successful in his career and against the Bills this weekend on Sunday. Let's go to the tape, and let me show you some of these Ooh. examples of what he's been doing. So here we go. He's going to be looking for Logan Thomas on this post here in the slot. You see him circled there. And the thing that stands out on this play is that anticipation I talked about. Watch when he's getting this ball out of his hand. It's right as Logan is clearing that overhang defender. He's going to hang in the pocket and deliver a strike. I think Byron Pringle's not supposed to be running a post here because the spacing gets messed up, but the ball is so on point. It doesn't matter. He fits it in that tight window. And when you look at the end zone view, there's another element to this too. He knows he's going to have to take a shot to deliver this ball. There's a defender about to pop him in the face, but he's going to hang in there unfazed and deliver an absolute strike to Logan Thomas for the first down. But this next play is where it gets really, really special. He wants, he knows he wants Terry McLaurin here at the bottom of the screen running the skinny post, but he knows the Broncos are in this shell. It's going to be some type of quarters coverage. So he's going to have to manipulate those safeties if he wants to make that throw. So he's going to start looking to his left. You see it here. Justin Simmons, all pro safety. He sees where Howell's eyes are. He turns his back to McLaurin, starts looking that way. The other safety is squatting, and that's going to allow McLaurin to get behind the defense where he throws an absolute strike for the touchdown. And again, if you look at the Ooh. end zone, you can really appreciate how much he sells that he's going to his left here to get those safeties to freeze. Look at this. He's going to slide up in the pocket to the left. His eyes are to the left and he resets and just uncorks an absolute laser to McLaurin. For a quarterback to be doing these things in just his third career start, it's pretty special. And I put together a little parlay for this weekend for, nice. for Commander's Bills. I like Howell over the 220 and a half passing yards, Josh Allen over the 250 and a half passing yards, and the all total over 40 and a half points. Listen. These defenses have not been clicking yet. They can be dominant. They haven't been yet. They're giving up some yards through the air. So I like it. Great hammer time. Thanks, guys, for watching and for being the energy with the comments. Love you. See you tomorrow.